Thank you for tuning in to this special service of worship on this Good Friday. We want to welcome all those from near and far who have chosen to worship with us tonight. I'd like to invite you to continue in worship with us on Sunday morning when we will celebrate Easter together at 9.30 a.m. We have one worship service only on Easter Sunday so that we can have a sense of gathering as a community of believers at the same time. So please tune in to this site again on Sunday morning at 9.30. Be sure to tell your friends and neighbors who do not use the internet that they can also join at the very same time on the radio at KBRK AM channel 1430. The Bishop has authorized virtual communion during this time, so we encourage you to gather your bread and grape juice ahead of time. Tonight's worship experience will be a little different from our traditional pattern. You will hear a message from Pastor Pete, we will sing together, you will hear scripture, and you will be invited into a time of darkness and meditation. But first, let us pray together. Lord, we come before you this evening as the shadows gather around us, resting at the foot of the cross. In this ever-changing world, we need Good Friday now more than ever. As this pandemic presses down on us, we are very aware that we live in a broken world in need of a Savior. When we feel like the darkness is closing in on us, help us stay focused on the cross, especially on this day, the day when the cross held up the sky. We are eternally grateful for your wondrous love that was poured out on the cross for us. And we thank you for the undeserved gift of grace that you have so generously sacrificed for us. We pray these things in the name of our blessed Redeemer. Amen. And so we're going to listen to how Matthew describes Good Friday. We're reading from Matthew chapter 15, verse 33. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God. Why did you abandon me? Some of the people there heard him and said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. One of them ran up with a sponge, soaked it in cheap wine, and put it on the end of a stick. Then he held it up to Jesus' lips and said, Wait, let us see if Elijah's coming to bring him down from the cross. With a loud cry, Jesus died. Just so far, the end of our reading. The most painful moment in Jesus' life is located in the context of darkness. We read that the crucifixion of Jesus happens at midday, but on this particular day, the brightest moment of the day is in fact its darkest. Matthew 15, 33, at noon the whole country was covered with darkness. One of our first fears as a child is the fear of the dark. We who are parents remember walking out of the room having said good night to a child and those words echo down the passage behind us, leave the light on. In fact, stores do a brisk trade in night lights because darkness is one of those primal fears. And so Matthew says at noon, the whole country was covered in darkness. Matthew describes this Good Friday moment as a fear 
fulfilled moment. But the moment of Jesus' crucifixion is more than just clouds passing in front of the sun. I think Matthew's description is intended to convey more than just the light getting dim. He's speaking of spiritual darkness. Matthew who's saying Jerusalem is suffering from spiritual darkness. The darkness that comes when an innocent man is killed in order to silence the truth. At noon, the whole country was covered in darkness. And I think this allows us to look beyond Jerusalem in history and search our own lives and recognize the moments of darkness in our own lives, those moments that nibble away at our own thoughts and imaginations. Here I'm thinking of what the 16th century Spanish mystic and poet, St. John of the Cross, describes as the dark night of the soul. This is the place where people search for God, but feel far away from God. This is the place where we lie awake at 2 a.m. and worry about everything. We worry about our children. We worry about our finances. We worry about the virus. We even worry about the beating of our own heart. The 2 a.m. darkness in our soul enables us to understand Matthew's words when he says, the whole country was covered in darkness. And so Good Friday becomes the moment when we sit in the shadow of the cross. Good Friday forces us to face the things we fear the most, to sit in shadows, to sit in darkness. And this is especially uncomfortable because we live in a culture that encourages us to do anything except look at darkness. The fact is, we try and handle our darkness. We use willpower and denial and medication. We try to drink our darkness away or we numb our darkness with drugs. Perhaps we use the distraction of Netflix and Facebook or we bury our darkness in work and yet more work. Or we just blame other people for the shadows within ourselves. And in the process, we forget that one thing that should be obvious. You see, the fact is, we don't handle our darkness. It's our darknesses that handle us. And this is especially true in this time of the great virus. As we sit at home, the darknesses can nibble away at us. Those worries are released. And it's in this time of suffering that I would ask of us, what are we going to do with our pain? Because the fact is, no one lives on earth without struggling. But if we don't transform our darkness, we will then transmit it onto other people. And so tonight, I want to take us to the cross. Take us to the cross as the place of our transformation. I'm inviting us to sit at the foot of the cross. Because when we sit in the shadows at the foot of the cross, we will discover Jesus sharing our darkness with us. As we sit at the foot of the cross, we hear Jesus saying, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Jesus, who in the grip of his own shadows, quotes from Psalm 22. Here is the Savior who shares the shadows you and I share. In hearing the words of Jesus, we discover that he understands our shadows. 
we understand that we can invite Jesus into our darkness. We can ask him to bring his light to bear on the darknesses we carry. I do want us to note that Jesus never came to carry our darkness on our behalf. Instead, he enters into our darkness and shares it with us. He suffers with us as we face this coronavirus. He worries with us as we think about our finances. He feels our pain as we probably need to admit that we're adding shadows to our family. And when we reach that place where we cry, my God, my God, I feel abandoned, we hear Jesus echoing those words with us. And at this point, we're able to accept that God is with us in our struggle. Remember those words from the psalm, Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So I invite us tonight into an ancient Christian tradition, the liturgy of tenebrae. Tenebrae is Latin for darkness. A gradual extinguishing of candles as we sense the gathering darkness around Jesus. But we will not be afraid of the darkness because we will come out the other side. The other side is Easter Sunday. And so we've asked five leaders from our church to each read a reading, after which they will extinguish a candle. And I'm inviting us together to feel that gathering darkness. I'm asking you to keep watch at the foot of the cross. I'm asking you to hold the silence. I know it's tough, you're sitting at home, you, you're in your lounge, but for a moment, as the five readings are read, as the candles are extinguished, let's hold the silence. Let's imagine ourselves sitting with Jesus at the foot of his cross. After the readings, there will be a song of meditation, but there will not be a benediction because tonight is an unfinished story. It's only part one. Part two then happens on Easter Sunday. Come back at 9.30 on Easter Sunday and discover how darkness is transformed by light. It is Matthew who tells us, the whole country was covered with darkness.
Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter declared to him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go yonder and pray. The Shadow of Betrayal while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Hail, Master. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why are you here? Then they came up and laid hands upon Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the slave of the highest priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. The Shadow of Accusation those who had arrested Jesus took him to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of law and the elders had gathered together. Peter followed from a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest's house. He went into the courtyard and sat down with the guards to see how it would all come out. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find some false evidence against Jesus to put him to death, but they could not find any even though many people came forward and told lies about him. Finally, two men stepped up and said, This man said, I am able to tear down God's temple and three days later build it back up. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer to give to this accusation against you? But Jesus kept quiet. Again, the high priest spoke to him, In the name of the living God, I now put you under oath. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus answered him, So you say. But I tell all of you. 
From this time on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right side of the Almighty and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, Blasphemy! We don't need any more witnesses. You have just heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He is guilty and must die. Then they spat in his face and beat him. And those who slapped him said, Prophesy for us, Messiah. Guess who hit you. The Shadow of Denial Meanwhile, as Peter was sitting in the courtyard, a girl came over and said to him, You are with Jesus, for both of you are from Galilee. But Peter denied it loudly. I don't even know what you're talking about, he angrily declared. Later, out by the gate, another girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus from Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. But after a while, the men who were standing came over to him and said, We know you are one of the disciples, for we can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter began to curse and swear. I don't even know the man, he said. And immediately the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went away crying bitterly. The Shadow of Crucifixion He was hated and rejected by people. He had much pain and suffering. People would not even look at him. He was hated and we didn't even notice him. But he took our suffering on him and felt our pain for us. We saw his suffering and thought God was punishing him. But he was wounded for the wrong we did. He was crushed for the evil we did. The punishment which made us well was given to him and we are healed because of his wounds. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride.